I'd like to introduce to you Irene Dool from the World Mission and Ecumenism team, and also the Reverend Dr. Jenny Annis, who is the chair of the Bukavu Link within the World Mission um, and Ecumenism team. And they will be speaking to you in a moment. As you are aware from the programme, we are launching the companion link between St. David's Diocese and the Diocese of Bukavu today. I will hand over to Irene. Good morning, everybody. I need to say I have been asked to speak as I have been previously engaged in developing a link between a Welsh diocese and an African diocese. Um, you will see on the board, I have put up the word Ubuntu. Um, this is an African concept, which means I am because we are. It's a journeying together. It is being admitted into a relationship a kinship relationship with all its responsibilities and all its joys. It is the honouring of one another, respecting one another and offering comfort and support to family members. And this, I hope, is what a link with the Diocese of Bukavu will bring about. I'm going to use Ubuntu as a sort of acrostic to hinge our thoughts on this morning as I have such a short time. It starts with the you. The you is us. Everybody, the individual, the parishes, the diocese, both dioceses. It hinges on all of us being committed, being willing to step out into the unknown for at the moment, we know very little about each other. But as we journey together, we hope that we will be journeying towards more knowledge as we share together. Our diocese is basing this link on prayer, our prayerful support for our brothers and sisters in Bukavu. However, it is also Bukavu basing their diocese in the same situation and praying for us as we will pray for them. So our link is a prayer base of mutual give and take and support. Now, we don't know each other at the moment, but by communicating in prayer, in verbal communication, in all the communicating ways our technology allows, and in the personal communication during visits when circumstances allow. We begin to build up that relationship. We begin to share our needs and our joys. We give and we receive to one another. We get to know people not just names. We are beginning with Bishop Bahati and Rajer, we hope, in these next few weeks. So the benefits for us is an enrichment. Every link is different, but the common factor is enrichment for all of those who are actively involved. Enrichment in our prayer life for our prayer can be deeper, it can be more specific. We know what we are praying and who we are praying for. So we have a wonderful beginning, if we will take it. We are in a unique situation. We have an opportunity to be involved with members of the Universal Church in a wonderful and a deeper way than we could otherwise be. We become more aware of what it means to be part of the worldwide Anglican Communion. We can be open to new ways of doing and thinking as we share ideas thinking of ministry, 
the role of our priests, our lay ministries, all the ministries that make our diocese and the diocese of Bukavu what they are. We can share ideas of worship. Our African brothers and sisters have such lively, deeply joyful services of worship, a simple but a deep faith which we can learn from in our own diocese. We can have these elements in our worship and we can learn from our brothers and sisters our means of serving our local communities. We have time when we travel together for reflection, to think of our own circumstances, so different from those of our brothers and sisters. And in that reflection, our own Christian walk is deepened because we can come before God with a deep spirit of thankfulness for the blessings that he gives to us and wants to give. We have the time to think deeply on what we are involved with. During that travelling together, we have a chance to give tokens, tangible tokens of our love and our friendship. These are the benefits that we can gain from such a link. The link journey can take us from this unawareness where we are at the moment towards understanding not just of our brothers and sisters, but understanding of where we are, what we can bring, what we can develop in our own diocese in a wonderful way, unheard of ways and unthought of ways that we've not considered before, just by this way of sharing together. We can travel towards more unity with one another, with our brothers and sisters, in Christ and in the spirit of Ubuntu. Our link will develop according to our commitment and to the commitment of our brothers and sisters in Bukavu. This is the journey. Will you come? Thank you, Irene. My journey to Bukavu started over 20 years ago while I was in theology college. Uh, the bishop of, the, of Bukavu at that time, Bishop Fidel de Rukba, was in my tutor group. And not a week went by when he didn't say to me, you are called to Africa and I've got a parish for you. After my ordination, I declined. I said to him, I'm really sorry, Fidel, but they've got nasty things like guns out there. And he said, don't worry, the Lord, the Holy Spirit will protect you. So I went off to parish work here and he went home. But once the Holy Spirit plants the seeds, he doesn't let go. Two years later, the bishop was to be consecrated as archbishop. And unfortunately, we couldn't find a Welsh, bishop, a Welsh priest to go and represent the church in Wales out there for the ceremony. So Bishop Baharty asked if I would go, and I did. And that memory will last with me forever. The sight of 20 African bishops dancing the Lord's Prayer is a sight to behold. I went to see Mahumba, the church where he wanted me to work. And we said to him that we would stay for three months to see if we could cope with the climate change, cope with the culture shock. And it became apparent over those three months that we could do more good coming back and building links, uh, make, uh, drawing awareness to the situation out there and going backwards and forwards. Uh, Bukavu is very Pembrokeshire in its ways. Tomorrow we'll do. We'll do it tomorrow. So if you're there for two years, you don't get any more done than you would if you went for three, three months. But Bukavu was built originally as a holiday centre for the uh, reigning Belgian people. 
When they pulled out in 1964, there was only 8,000 people there. Local people weren't classed as human, and they didn't even have as much status as a motor car or a cow. They weren't educated, and they weren't allowed to be educated. It was enshrined in the Constitution that they were not to be educated. Hence, when the Belgians pulled out, which they pulled out over the space of two months, everything started to fall to pieces because there was nobody to maintain the roads or the services or the infrastructure. Today, it's home to over three million people. We've heard a lot about the atrocities in Rwanda and the genocide there, but it was the same tribes working there who were working in the Congo. When it stopped in Rwanda, they just hopped over the border and they carry on. There have been three times as many people killed in, in um, the Congo through this genocide as there were in the whole of the uh, casualties in the Second World War, and that includes those who were killed in the Holocaust. A terrific number of people who've lost their lives. But it also means many people have nothing and when I say nothing, it is absolutely nothing, just literally what they stand up in. So we go out biannually and work for three months, up to three months, depending on how far the money will stretch, and then come back. I teach in the seminary, in the Bible schools, in the secondary school, the primary school, and I work with the rape victims. Once a woman has been raped, her family will not take her back. She is blamed for the problems that she has caused. It's considered her fault, even though it's the soldiers who've done it. She can, and the, the, her husband will throw her out, along with any children that he has had with her, because they are tainted by her shame. <clears throat> and often there's a new baby to contend with as a result of the rape. These women need to rebuild their lives. We've sent containers of aid, which include sewing machines, mostly hand sewing machines, and the Mother's Union, because they do all the social work. There are no government agencies to feed you if you're in hospital or in prison. And I've been as far as the prison doors because I was arrested for witchcraft. My husband has been as far as the prison doors as he was arrested too, but I won't go into that one because it's a huge, long story. But we know what it's like in prison. You don't get fed if somebody doesn't bring you something to eat. You don't get a bed unless you bring your bed in with you. You don't get clothed. There's no, no real sanitation. So the Mother's Union picks up all these duties. They also pick up the education of these raped women. And they've built a school where the women learn basic um, sewing skills. And when they graduate, they're given one of our sewing machines so they can go back to their villages and earn a living. Likewise with the boy soldiers, the men's group has set up a carpentry school, which St. David's Diocese has helped to not just only finance, but they've also sent tools out. The boy soldiers can be as young as 11, 5, doesn't matter what age. Pick an age and you've got a boy soldier that age and you've got to get them out of that situation. They've only no killing as a way of surviving because most have got no parents left. So the church has set up a carpentry school. It teaches the boys the rudiments of carpentry, gives them a basic carpentry kit and sends them back to their village to earn a living. Most of this has been done with the help of the St. David's Diocese and we hope we can build more schools. The Mahamba Mothers Union has been working with St. Mary's Fishguard Mother's Union. They send out boxes of uh, goodies that the ladies like, little things like hair decorations, nail varnish, lipsticks, all the luxuries of life that we take for granted that the ladies there, it's heaven. But the biggest part of our work out there is prayer. Just a short story. When I go to the market, the ladies of the compound come to pray with me before I go to the market. I've only got to go three or 400 yards, but they pray that I will have a safe journey to the market and I won't be mugged. They pray that the food that I want will be available. They pray that it will be at, at um, African price and not Mzungu price, so I don't pay an inflated price for my food. 
Then they pray that I will have a safe journey home. When I get back into the compound, they gather round again and pray and thank God for my safe delivery and the goods that I've bought. So their whole life is based on prayer. And my prayer is that many of you will pick up this link, even if it's just praying at home on your own, or whether you can pick up a family out there and pray for them. The link so far has put 12 children through school every year. Some of those are now graduated for university. One is now a doctor in the Gabon in an American field hospital. Another one is about to take his final exams for, the law, for his law degree out in Chicago, and then he will return back to Bukavu. Another one is studying medicine in South Africa. We mostly put girls through school because a girl has less chance of education. If a woman has three daughters and then she has a son, one of the girls will have to stop school so the son can go to school. So it's not uncommon to go into a primary school and see women in their 20s, 30s or 40s learning basic art, the three R's. So we try to put the girls through school and if they graduate and go through university, there is the promise of a Western wedding dress because that is every girl's dream. So far, we've sent three wedding dresses and one of our girls is now running a medical center of her own. So please, can you find it in your hearts to join us on this journey of discovery for them and for us? Thank you. We now come to the signing of the link document. since I first met Bishop Ahati when he was the Dean of the Cathedral and links were forged with St David's Cathedral at that point, a link which is continuing. So I'm very honoured to have been able to sign this uh, uh, agreement, this, uh, we're not calling it twinning are we? We're calling companion it... Companion link. Companion link, that's excellent.